Today I have a video about one thing that you guys have been requesting through my Instagram and it's I have been posting these stories of my planner and you know the tasks that I have to do during the day and some of you actually asked me if I could share how I stay on top of all of my activities and how I plan myself as an artist day by day so I thought that yeah there's a cool idea for a video if you guys want to know about this I am more than willing to share what works for me I do want to make clear that these are things that obviously are my personal choice when it comes to organizing but I will share them with you and if they work for you let me know because that would be really cool if you are new here welcome if not welcome back I am Chelsea Escalona I'm a digital artist I'm living in Berlin and I'm sharing my journey here on YouTube so let's start with the video now when I started having this full-time art space to work on my career and trying to build my portfolio, my work, my business. I was actually coming out of 2020 where life was very chaotic and we were just stuck at home and I used to work whenever I wanted or whenever I feel it. There was not really any structure that helped me build a consistent art practice. I realized that I was needed like some kind of organization and how to learn to do my own time management because at this point it's very up to me what I do and what I don't do during the day. That's when I started actually to like test different ways of how I can organize myself. The first thing that actually made a difference for me was having a physical planner instead of a digital one. The second one was writing things down. The third one was to actually have in my daily tasks somewhere visible and I could like check it anytime if I had to put my physical planner away. And the fourth was actually keep a progress track. I have this visual cue for myself and that way I can see how much I actually accomplish of what I have planned for myself. So how do I do it? This part actually took some time of trial and error and to get to know my work process. Once I can figure out the timings that takes me when I am doing any type of work, whether it's self-initiated work or client projects, I try to set a time frame for each step of my process. I try to divide my work in steps. Sketch, refining sketch, line work, coloring phase, finishing touches. It depends, of course, on what is your work process, but for me, that would be the rough uh, overall steps. I then try to spread those steps into time. I give like between one or two days for each step. And of course, I always try to stick to my planning. This is the part where discipline comes in. Discipline is just another skill and if you commit to your schedule and you make the conscious work of coming to your desk, sit down and do the tasks that you have planned for the day, it's a muscle. You build it and then it, it comes to a point when it just comes out naturally for you and you don't have to like make the effort to like, oh, I have to go and sit down. <laughs> You know what I mean. Try to stick to your planning because that's the most important step into this process to actually maintain the organization and to stay on top of the things that you want to do. Talking about systems that work for keeping track. So I start my day by checking my planner and see if I have any deadlines that I need to take into account of be or be aware of and then I go straight to wherever is that day and this is where I need to deliver this file so the, or this is where I want to finish this product design or whatever. Then once that I have that deadline that gave me the time scope that I actually have to work with and then I start allocating the 
tasks and the steps, if there are things that maybe I don't have much clear in time, whether they will happen or not, like a client feedback, then I try to like leave a bit of a blank spaces on these upcoming days. If I have to like send files for revision and I, I know when I have to send the file for revisions, but then I don't know when they will answer me. So I try to keep those days open and then you can like keep planning based on what you actually will need to do. This is of course talking about client projects. If it is self-initiated, then you don't really have this problem. I find out that it was easier for me to write things down so that I can remember the things that I was needing to do. Then after I have all, all of my task list spread in my planner and by day, I go and check in the day that I am working, what is the task that I feel it would be if I don't feel in, for instance, like work, like in a very work mood that day, maybe I'll start with an easy one that will smooth my progress into getting that work mood during the day. I know that my mind will be in a better headspace to actually keep carrying on with the rest of my list. And this actually helps me a lot to see the progress that I am making especially when you have a long list of to-dos. One thing that I actually like when I finish with each task is to highlight it with a marker. I just got, you know, a couple of standard highlighters that they help me keep a visual tracking of the things that I have done and the things that I have still have left to do. For this, I actually made up with this color system that works for myself where yellow will be a completed task, orange will be that I did not do that or that I did not complete it. Pink is actually that it was moved for the future and green is that it was canceled, like I don't have to do this anymore. With that visual key, I know how much I made progress in a day, how much I have still left to do, if I have pendings from days before. So it's, I'm a visual person, so visual keys are like, like important for me. Maybe you, if you are an artist and you are also a visual person, maybe these things will, can, I mean, will help you too. You just need to come up with your own code system, like I did. The one thing that I actually like to do is to keep my planner open next to me with those to-do list because like that I don't have to like stop my workflow if I finish one thing I go and it's right next to me and I just highlight it and I can keep going to my tablet without having to like having to like make too much movement and break the momentum in my work process and at the end of the day I simply check if I was able to complete all of my tasks and the things that I plan for myself if I am too tired because this also helped me to understand my energy levels and this helps me to do that to like see if I just okay I, I plan too much I try to do too much today and I am exhausted and then maybe the next day I won't be able to perform as well as I did this day these things also help me to get to know myself and how I work and how much I can actually accomplish during the day. And yeah, when the day is over and I get all of these tasks that I wanted to do, I close my planner until the next day, guys. So when it comes to know how much I can actually accomplish during the week, this is a process that takes time and where you need to observe yourself and take mental notes of how do you feel during the week, uh, during the day, during the night, whenever is the best times that works for you uh, and you feel more creative or functional. In my case, I have learned that my energy levels are actually higher during the day and I am most productive in the morning and at a brief window in the afternoon. So with time, I have learned what are my energy levels during the week and when I am most productive. Therefore, I have set 
specific days in each week during the month for maybe some constants to do or tasks that I need to do like editing the videos or like reply emails or create stuff kind of like that and Mondays and Tuesdays are my most productive days creatively speaking is when I make the most progress and I'm the fastest and I don't feel tired or anything then Wednesdays are kind of like my check-in days is where I see how I feel, what I still have left to do from the things that I wanted to do during the week and try to like plan the rest of the week based on how I feel and what I still have left to do. Third day is the day that I usually reserve for filming YouTube videos, editing and handle pretty much every YouTube stuff. Usually when Friday comes, I try to like keep it very minimum, mainly admin tasks, stuff that they do not demand that much from me so that I can actually like get all my stuff done in the week. And like I say, on the weekends, I try to not work at all. Even when I have client projects, I try to stop during the weekends because your brain needs to stop, your body needs to stop. It's time for anything else but to do work or think about work. Reset, get your brain and your body time to get bored and trust me, you will come back with better energy when it comes to Monday and you will have the desire to sit down on your desk and do the things that you want to do or need to do. At least for me, it works that way and yeah, I'm trying to keep it even when I am working on client breaks. So when it came to creating a routine and keeping habits, for me, you can totally see that this was not happening from day to night. It actually took me years to trying and seeing what works for me and what did not work for me. Even so, this year, I still want to learn to be more gentle with my time. Um, I also want to like give myself the space to try new mediums and to make time to actually have a healthy sketchbook routine because I've been loving a lot a lot to be drawing on my sketchbook. This is like part of my 2024 goals on keeping these time slots during my workday to do more traditional art. So this is when having time to rest it came, came in and it's super important. Especially if you want to like keep doing this and building an art practice that lasted for years, you actually need to schedule time to rest and to learn how to unwind and to have leisure time. This is how you will avoid or minimize um, burnout. I wanted to like make this special part of the video about even though I have been kind of already talking in the other points but yeah I wanted to like really really say here how important it is to schedule resting times how important it is to stick to your work schedule wherever that is because when you actually prioritize these resting times you give yourself time to be bored and your mind will inevitably came up with ideas and will give you this new found inspiration. It will also help you to keep you motivated and to go back to work with fresh energies. If you just had an idea and you just don't want to forget it, it's okay, you can go and write it down, you know, and try to keep that mental image for when you sit down to work again but yeah you try to stop <laughs> at least that's what I do I go watch a movie go watch a show and uh, just go out and take a walk sometimes just stop take some time take a break it's important I hope that you have find this video useful and that you liked it and remember to give it a like subscribe if you want to see more future videos there are another couple of things coming up and yeah, I hope that you have a great day and that you have enjoyed this. So, okay, bye. See you in the next one.